This was obviously the biggest race of my life for a number of reasons. All right, the journey to Seville has started. We are in the Phoenix International Airport, AKA America's Friendliest Airport, uh, en route to Boston first. So we got some business in Boston before we head out to Seville. Whole family's here. <laughs> Should be fun. Where are we going, Jace? Yeah. Airplane. Where is the airplane going to? <coughs> Boston. Boston. And then where? Spain? Spain. For this race, I brought my entire family across the world to Spain. So that was a really cool experience. Something that I, you know, I'd been to Spain once before by myself and I thought, wow, I really want to bring my family here. And so when I was looking for a marathon to run uh, and try to hit this Olympic qualifier, it just so happens that Seville is one of the fastest courses in the world. And I was like, yeah, this could work out really well. I really like Spain. I know I can do that travel. I've done it before. I know what, what to expect with that. Here we go. Chase, you ready to fly? I basically decided I wanted to bring my family because I love the country and also because I know myself. I am not the kind of person that wants to go to Spain a week before a race to adapt time-wise, which is what I think I needed, and be alone for a week. I needed their emotional support, their, you know, just comfort of being, it feels like home when you're with your family. Quincy Market for some lunch with the Adam and Mika Wood. <laughs> Jace, what did you have for lunch? Pet. Quesadilla? Having some lobster. So we are now in Boston. We are going to uh, have a little fun weekend here with Puma. Specifically today, I'm going to be heading over to Puma headquarters to do some shoe testing for the big race. I'm going to be comparing two models of their super shoe to see which one I'm the most efficient in to help me decide what shoe to race in. And yeah, so it's also halfway between Flagstaff and Seville, kind of. So it's a good way to break up the travel. So we'll be here for this weekend, then we'll head out to Seville Sunday. But this should be a fun, uh, fun way to break up the travel with the little ones. Uh, did you like your flight on the airplane? Yeah, it was good. Where are we? Yeah. We're in Boston. Say Boston. Boston. What are you going to do today? What are you going to do today? He's going to the aquarium. So, I went to Boston before I went to Spain because right now Puma has two awesome super shoes. The DV8 Elite 3s, which was worn by the two US Olympic qualifiers on the women's side, Fiona O'Keefe and Dakota Lindworm, and then the Fast R2, which is a shoe that has been worn by people that have hit the Olympic standard on the men's side m more recently at the Houston Marathon, Pat Tiernan, Henrik Pfeiffer. So they have these two shoes, we know they're both good. I'd been wearing the Fast R2 mostly in my races leading up to this race, but I'd started training in the DV Elite 3 and I would liked both of them. So. I planned this visit to Boston to visit the North American headquarters for Puma and test out which shoe was better for my stride. You know, I was kind of a toss up. I was okay with whatever the test told me and, and I'll elaborate, that test was a running economy test. Just got done with the uh, lab testing there with Puma. It was really fun, really good opportunity. Coolest thing I've ever done as far as like actually geeking out over the numbers that go behind what makes a shoe better for your stride. Uh, to be specific, we used metabolic testing to, to uh, and running economy to test what shoe I was better in. Uh, running economy is the only thing that shoe technology can influence. It can, it can influence your VO2 max, it can in influence your lactate threshold, but it can influence your running economy. And what that test showed us is that my running economy was best in the Fast R2. So, the shoe I've been training in the most anyways, uh, it was between this and the DV8 Elite 3, 
Um, this shoe though, I was 0.48% more efficient in. Now that doesn't mean I'm gonna run 0.48% faster than if I wore the Deviate Elite 3s. That's actually not a huge difference, but what I did notice uh, in the test and what the numbers show is that I would take around 500 less steps in the race with this shoe. It ex increases my stride length by about five centimeters per step. And that's not nothing. You know, if you're just talking a cadence of 180 steps per minute, 500 less steps, I think would mean if we're having the exact same cadence, almost three minutes less. Obviously it's not gonna lead to that much, but it is cool to think about like, well, wow, it's influencing my stride that much that I'm running five centimeters further every time. Uh, my ground contact time was low. My air time was higher. Uh, I just think that that's something that's really encouraging knowing that this shoe is, is, is altering my gait in a way that makes me more efficient, makes me uh, require less metabolic energy output per, per stride. And uh, I'm pumped. I trust this shoe. This shoe is... The shoe I wore for my 6102 in Houston, it, I wore it at the Manchester Road Race. I've been training in it a lot. So I am pumped to put this to the test in Seville. Okay, so we leave in Boston. We're going to Spain. What do you think? We're in an airplane. We're in an airplane? Yes. Going to Spain. Huh. Farewell, Boston. Next stop, Spain. I think that the thing that helped me have this like sort of breakthrough moment in the in the marathon, one that I felt like was long overdue, more than anything is just experience. This was my eighth marathon. Like that's like a, that's quite a bit actually for uh, only having been running professionally for five years, focusing on the marathon since 2019. Um, yeah, I, I mean I've had a lot of cracks at it now, and it took me took me a lot of swings before I started figuring it out. And I feel like my last four, three of those four have gone really well. Last five, four of those five have gone really well. I feel like it's, I'm starting to see a trend where it's like that more of them are going well than not well, which is like really encouraging. Like I'm figuring out the event. I know how to run it. I know how to, I guess, just experience that. And, and I'm gaining more confidence in my ability to marathon and less fear about, you know, the distance. When I started, it was like, oh my gosh, this, the marathon is, is daunting. And I had so many experiences where, you know, you get two thirds of the way through and you're like, I have no idea how I'm gonna run 10 more miles. All right, first workout here in Spain. Um, bit of a late start this morning. Yesterday was a whirlwind after getting in yesterday morning. So we had a bit of a late start today. So it's almost noon. I'm gonna go do my classic pre-marathon workout, which is four by 2K, starting at about 314 per K, and then going 307, then three flat, and then about 255. So should be a good one. Um, just kind of fine tuning things, getting a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And I'll finish it up with a 800, kind of opening up the stride, probably 210 to 212. I'm gonna go over to a track that's about 3K jog from our Airbnb for that one. So I'll bring you guys with me. But in training, something that I've experienced an improvement on is uh, because I've done all these workouts before and I've kind of become a, a veteran within these workouts because Ryan, you know, we do things differently here and there, but a lot of stuff is like, hey, I've, I've done this before. So things are um, refining themselves and I find, you know, 25 mile long run doesn't feel as scary or as hard or as long as it once did. I remember the first few times I touched those distances in training it was like really difficult just to cover them. Now it's like, it's casual almost. And that's, that's because I've kind of built that callus in my legs, in my mind for, for the distance and for the training. All right, so we're along the course right here, uh, right outside our Airbnb. I'm gonna jog over to the track and uh, Rip this workout, here we go.
at the track here. Pretty busy for a Tuesday afternoon around lunchtime. A lot of people out getting workouts in. Yeah, so I'm gonna change into my racing shoes. You saw the lab test in this video. These are the bad boys. Pumped to race in these first marathon in these shoes. Did Houston half in these shoes. Did the Manchester road race in these shoes. And they're amazing. Best shoe on the market right here. All right, this might be hard to film while I'm actually doing the workout. So if I don't get anything of this, it's because I didn't get the courage to ask some random Spanish person to film a rep, but I might, I might get that courage. Six fourteen, six thirteen, six fourteen. 14, there. So a little better pacing, pretty even. So two to go. Six flat. All right, one more 2K and then a nice 800 to open it up. Two K is done. That one was 549 high, 255 one, 254 eight for the Ks. I definitely still feeling the flight, the travel, and my breakfast. Had a big breakfast because I was starving, but Pace feels like I can relax in it. Um, now I get to open up the legs for a fast eight. Probably run around 212, we'll see. Um, all right. Remember how I said it was nice, cloudy, and cool? Well, it's not anymore. I have not been this hot in a minute, so hopefully it's not this four months, and I doubt it is. I think it's like 70 Fahrenheit right now, and it's supposed to be in the mid 50s for the race, but holy crap, coming from winter to decently warm and humid. Feels good, but big shock to the system, so. Finished my cool down back with the fam while they were doing laundry. Jace, where are we? Where are we? Yeah. Spain. Spain. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. So, about a, I don't know, 10 and a half, 11 mile day. It took me till two o'clock to finish my morning workout, so we're on Spanish time already. Jace, come here. Show them your run. Show me how fast you are. Stop. Go run. Go run. Go run. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just, I just, I knew that. There were some cons, obviously, traveling with a toddler and an eight month old is, is stressful, more stressful than traveling by yourself, only worrying about yourself. But the pros totally outweighed that. The, the opportunity to show them a part of the world that was, that I think is a really cool part of the world and that I knew that they would enjoy. And also uh, just simply knowing what this moment meant for my career and the opportunity to try to qualify for the Olympic games. I wanted that moment to be shared and shared with the people that it impacts the most and have impacted me the most, so. Day 
tres in España, not learning any Spanish. Chase, say hola. Hola. Just finished my run. I'm starting to get a little bit more adjusted to the time here. Excited to race. Been uh, enjoying learning the landscape of the city and uh, I've ran probably 15, 20K of the course, probably 15K of the course so far. So I uh, feel like it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be fast. My takeaway after yesterday's double on the course was I don't know how many more times in my career I'm gonna be in a place like this with this opportunity to run fast. So I'm gonna take full advantage. Yeah, yeah. All right, being a bit of a tourist here today. Check it out. Hey guys, just uh, got to the hotel today here in Seville, decided to leave the Airbnb two days before the race just to kind of focus on rest and routine just, you know, before every race. Generally, you're in a hotel for at least two days before, so figured getting out of uh, the kids' shared space and, yeah, just getting into this race mode was probably for the better. Um, just got my bib, credentials, and my bottle stickers. Pretty cool that they throw on the flag. I should be the only one with the Canada flag, so it should be easier to identify my bottles out there. Um, yeah, it, this, is, this has been a, a great week with the family, spending some time here in Seville. Um, biggest thing is just now really focusing on resting getting ready for the race this morning i i did a little run with my my friend michael summers from he used to run for portland and he runs for belgium now he's run 20809 and it was really cool kind of talking to him as he debuted at this race last year about his perspective on this race the olympic standard in general and got me got me really excited for this race i'm just like really really grateful that I am here and that this is an, an opportunity that I am healthy and fit for. I, I just kind of feel like the confidence in my ability to run fast has grown throughout the week after, you know, kind of getting through the taper tantrum, you know, those like last two weeks doubts and fears kind of rode through this last uh week or so and now I kind of feel like I'm finally at the place where it's like okay let's just start this race man I'm ready it's it's exciting and I just want to I want to get out there and rip it so yeah pretty pumped So it's a very warm welcome to the 39th edition of the ever popular Zurich Seville Marathon where the elite and masses battle over 42.2 kilometers, 26.2 miles on the flattest and fastest marathons in the world. It is a usual perfect weather here. There we go, the start of the Zurich Seville Marathon 2024. Race morning, perfect conditions, gun goes off, and it was straight business. I felt like I settled in really quickly to the pace. It actually felt really, really controlled, and that was awesome. And I, 
I was debating, you know, it, I had heard that this group that we were going to be going for the Olympic standard with was going to be huge, like 50 plus people. I'm not sure if it was because I put myself right at the front and never looked back, right? Okay, we made it to stop number one to see Rory for the first time. We got the kiddos in tow. Say hi, Jace. Hey. Rory sent me a whole itinerary for what to do, which I love. So we'll see you when you come by. And you say, go dad. Go dad. Run fast. Run fast. Woo. Let's see if she'll say dad dad. You say dad dad. Dad dad. Even though it's a marathon, it's a long ways to go. A lot of people want to turn off their brain, get in the pack, tuck in, and just like go almost zombie mode as long as they can. I, I tend to do best when I'm like really engaged with something, focused, moving through it with intention. And so I put myself at the front, 5K in, things are just going really well, obviously. At this point, it should feel super easy. I mean, if I'm trained properly, 5K at marathon pace should be a, a walk in the park. And it was, and that was encouraging. And I, as every split went by, like I said earlier, it was one of those things where I just was like, okay, I, I'm one step closer. Every 5K was kind of like, okay, next one's next one's just right around the corner. And the, the 5K splits were kind of flying by. And that was, that was a sign that my body was in a really good place. Nothing was off. 10K comes by, boom, we're right on pace, feeling good. 15K goes by, boom, right on pace, feeling good. I remember between 20K half marathon-ish and 25K was where I was like, okay, how do I feel right now? I was really just reading the body and I was like, I mean, it's getting hard. I've been out here for over an hour now. I'm over halfway through this race, but it's also like, I was kind of, I kind of thought back to other marathons. I was like, but I kind of, I feel better than I have at this point and I'm running faster than ever. So I was like, Let's just kind of roll with this. And I got to 25K and that was when I feel like I started racing. Like, and that's a little early. So a lot of people say the marathon doesn't even begin till 20 miles or 32K. Um, but I kind of got to 25K. I was like, I feel good. I'm, I'm going to kind of like lean into this a little bit. Let's go, Rory! Woo! Looking good, looking good! And just kind of like, started clipping it along. And I think from 25 to 30 K or it was 20 to 25 K. I can't remember. There was a, a stretch there where I was really kind of increasing my, my pace without even knowing. Cause I was just kind of getting excited about how my body was feeling. And then 30 K hits 20 miles. This is when the marathon gets real. This is when they warn you like, Hey, this is why this race doesn't even begin till this point. And of course, uh, I started dealing with some side stitches, things start coming up, like things that just happen. Not nothing horrible, you know, just like, oh, I feel something right here. And I have some, some practice with that. And you know, how do I work through this? You relax for a second, you back off for a second, work through each, each ebb and flow. 35K hits. This is where I'm seeing Jill in Plaza de España, which is like the most beautiful scenic part of the course. Also, extremely challenging because you're on cobblestone, you're turning a lot through this busy, busy happening section of the course. Okay, we are at stop number three at Plaza de España. We're at 34K, so we're just waiting for Rory to come by. So far, he's looking great. Let's go, Rory! Like water! Like water! Come on! You got this! And I kind of thought, oh man, I, I might be falling apart here. My legs are starting to get tired. You take a wrong step, something twinges, you know, just things are happening in your body. And I just rode the waves and made it 1K at a time. Um, and I remember specifically getting to 5K to go and being like, okay, if I can run around 15, 20 or something, I think I'll, I'll be good. But I thought I was slowing down, just convinced that, hey, it's the marathon. You've run 23 miles, your body's for sure tired. But I was like, I don't wanna focus on my pace, I wanna focus on racing. So I kind of forgot 
about like pace till the finish. And I was just running as hard as I could, racing the people around me. People are falling back, I'm passing people. Some people are pushing around me, like trying to get to the finish line, making moves, you know, trying to get their Olympic standard, whatever it may be. A lot of things are happening and I'm just really in the zone at this point. We are at finish line. Waiting, waiting for dad. I did not get a great spot, but get like 200 meters at a time go through my gears and like try to build on it i don't want to go too hard too early and risk you know something cramping on me my legs are really tired at this point and um i just go through each each 200 and push and push and push and then i see the finish i assume i have like 400 to go and i really start to push and then turn the corner you have the 42k mark on the road I look at my watch and I think there's 200 meters to go because I'm still in this mindset that it's exactly 42.2K. And I see I have to run a 35 seconds to get the standard. I'm like, I'm not running 440 pace, I better speed up. And I go as hard as I can and I, I, I burst into this like, almost like primal sprint and <laughs> I, 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 was, I have no idea how fast I was moving but I know I have never kicked like that at the end of a marathon ever before. It was like, everything was on the line every muscle in my body was just going to that finish line as hard as i could hip to ear i felt like i was like mo farah 2012 olympics you know fighting for gold i was just giving it everything i had and i uh, I, I was well under the standard right so i was 20801 and when I finally realized I was going to get the standard was about 50 meters to go you know I see that it still says 207 I'm like right there and uh, I just throw up my arms and I'm, I'm pumped that I that I did it Oh Phil Sesman I think Phil Sesman got inside it there's yes. Phil Sesman brilliant run oh. for Phil Sesman look at that Phil I Sesman. think I I was like already screaming like guttural reactions turn around you know, the other guys that are getting the standard that I worked with that whole way, I'm excited for them. Then I lay on the ground and puke and gather myself and then go see my family. It was beautiful. Yeah, 208, woo woo! Holy shit, that was hard. But that was the coolest thing I've ever done. Definitely the best execution ever. I, I'm at a loss for words, but I felt like I was gonna do it, gonna do it, gonna do it, and then I had a moment with about 5K to go where I was like, okay, just see as, as close as you can get, because I thought I was losing it, but I wasn't checking my splits. I was just focused on running as hard as I could and just getting to the next split. And with 1,200 meters to go, I saw I needed to run just about 450 pace set. And I just kicked as hard as I've ever kicked in my life. I puked across the finish line and I ended up running 208 flat. Uh, so, coolest thing ever. I'm just so pumped. I'm going to live under the assumption that I'm going to the Olympics. I think it's a very high likelihood that I will. I've qualified, I've punched my ticket, but I have not been selected yet. So uh, I will be selected so long as I remain in Canada's top three uh, through the end of the qualifying period, which is May 5th. Right now I'm in second behind Cam Levins and I'm actually number two of all time, all time in Canada. So I'm in a really good spot. I feel really confident that I should hold the spot, but I do respect my fellow competitors and obviously there's always the chance that two guys bump me back and I'm fourth and I'm the first man out. Obviously I'm, I'm super happy right now. Um, I, I feel like I accomplished a, a goal that felt far-fetched at times, felt impossible at times. You know, in training, when you have those hard days, it seems almost like, how am I gonna do this? And then to have it all come together on the day is, is a beautiful thing. Uh, it doesn't happen just by, by, by my work or from, um, you know, a talent or a, a, a hard work or, or any of these like cliche things, it comes from just like being really, really lucky and blessed, you know, having great coaches, great friends, great family support and great mentors for over the years. And I've, I've been incredibly fortunate to have uh, sponsorship support, Puma being on my side, you know, 
uh, role models like Jared Ward, Scott Fobble, great American runners like that, that I, I have been able to be teammates with, rub shoulders with, and um, have great coaches that were great marathon minds uh, from Coach I Stone in college to Ben Rosario, my coach at NAZ Elite, and then now Ryan Hall, one of the greatest American marathoners ever. It's just like, I feel like I've gotten so lucky and so blessed and to, to be in this position and have so many people, you know, make me who I am, mold me into this, this current athlete. And, and yeah, it's special. I mean, and now being able to share some of that, share some of them, share some of me in this, uh, in this outlet, this long form, you know, content, things that I can't share on Instagram and, uh, can't tell the full story of anywhere else. Uh, I hope you guys are really enjoying this part of the journey. This was when I set out to do this, I said, I wanted to build this story through my Olympic qualifying process, my process of trying to become an Olympian. And now that it seems as if I've done my job in this, in, in, in that journey, uh, the next thing will be to hopefully share my journey to the Olympics. And I hope you guys follow along with that, subscribe, like comment, and encourage that because it, it is scary putting this stuff out obviously like we don't know if what people like if people think uh it, this is worthwhile like this is a, obviously a investment of time money and effort so uh i want to keep doing it as long as it's doing something for for you guys the the people that are watching and uh yeah just wanted to let you guys know i really appreciate the support this has been really fun and i uh, hope to keep doing it throughout my career One last thing. Okay. Have you talked to Clayton and Connor Mance about teaming up at the Olympics now? Have you talked any words about them going and you going now maybe? Yeah, so obviously my college teammates, Connor and Clayton qualified uh, at the US Olympic trials. And that was a real, it lit a real fire under my ass for the last two weeks of my build um, going into that. I really felt like I had to do it. And I talked to both of them after their races, before their races, and they, they both reached out to me after mine. And uh, I talked to Connor Mance about training together potentially for the Olympics, and that would be really cool. But also, I really want to beat those guys. I I <laughs> I want to I want to beat those guys really really bad at the Olympics. Like they're my friends, and but the, my competitive nature is like, man, like I want to I want to beat those guys. You know, that's that's all I can think of is like I want to train with them. I want to I want them to do great, but I want to do just a little bit better. I'm never gonna see those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good, good.